Hey guys, good to have you guys on board. It is fish hook time, six o'clock, different bad channel tonight, Wednesday. We normally are on Tuesday. So sorry for the change, but uh, yesterday I had more to do than I knew, than I had hours in a day. So we had to move it up to today. I hope I didn't, didn't inconvenience too many people, but we've got an exciting night tonight. We've got some really cool stuff we're going to talk about. And as you guys come on board, uh, the, those who want to do live chatting, just write down where you're from for the sake of everybody else. And uh, we're going to move right along. And if you guys have any uh, questions, and you very well might tonight, if you do, just bring them on. Uh, just be patient, and I'll handle them toward the end. I might remind you to ask me again. Tom, buddy from Carrollton, Virginia, how you doing? And my buddy Nolan, with, we're going to talk about you too tonight, MB Custom Tackle from British Columbia. You forgot to put that down. You got to say you're from British Columbia. Well, guys, I hope you guys are having a good week. Uh, we are having – one heck of a rainy week here in uh, Tennessee. Uh, they're going to be over four inches of rain, and it's it's raining outside now. You might hear thunder tonight. I I can't block that out, but it is ridiculous, ridiculous. I looked at the dam because you know I wanted to fish there, but they didn't have it going long. Uh, long uh, enough for me to uh, feel safe that the stripers might come up and be chowing. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? But we got good stuff we're going to talk about tonight. First, I want to say thank you. I am I am over the top. I love comments. I like you guys. The interaction has been awesome. So for all of you guys there in YouTube land and girls in YouTube land, thank you very much. Uh, very nice compliments. I appreciate it. Uh, we put, um, well, let me just say this for some of you folks uh, that are going to be browsing on the internet and you pick us up, don't change that channel. This is an outdoor channel. We are now going to be referring to ourselves as Fish Hook Outdoors because it encompasses everything that I stand for. We have cooking in the seafood world, catch, clean, and cook primarily. We've got seafood reviews. We've got product reviews for grilling and camping and maybe other things as well. We've got pure fishing and pure hunting. And hunting is just getting underway. We're working on the rifles now. We'll talk about that later if we have time today, tonight. But tonight we're going to talk about fishing First, I want to talk about, I hope you guys checked out. If you didn't, please look on the, on the channel tonight. I put out a new video called, I want to talk a little bit about Valentine's Day, and I'm going to put a challenge out to you guys and you men out there that are married and you guys that have a sweetheart. Valentine's Day is two days away. God help you if you forget it. That's a mortal sin. So don't let that happen. <clears throat> I put out a great video with my daughter who she had a channel in the past, but her bakery business is really going crazy. So she's putting all her efforts in that and her time. You, only, you can only split yourself up so much and then have to raise a family and have a life. So you got to have a balance in everything that we do. Well, it was garlic butter steak with scallops and good organic butter. Let me tell you, you'll be smacking your lips. I am going to put a challenge out to you guys. Being that it's Valentine's Day, that was a very simple, I got the recipe on the, if you guys ever watched any of the videos, at the very end of the video, I put the recipe in the links and I tell you all the ingredients and then I tell you how to cook it. Now you can modify anything as long as hopefully you know what you're doing and you get some expected results. Well, this was off the charts. I absolutely love scallops. 
That's like a gourmet, another gourmet dish. Like when I did that pesto pompano, oh my gosh, that was on the level of gourmet. That really was. That's no joke. And even though I made it, I know it sounds biased. I brought it to work. My daughter loved it. My daughter-in-law loved it. My other daughter loved it. Everybody liked it. I got a really good unbiased opinions. Now, this garlic butter steak, I pick sirloin fillets. You can pick beef tenderloin fillets. You can do filet mignon. It depends on how much you love. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm really going to give it to you tonight. How much you love your wife is going to show in what you do. Remember, we know a tree by its fruit. And you know that expression. It's as old as Methuselah. Actions speak louder than words. What's that expression? I can't hear a word you're saying. Come on. You want to see it. Your wife wants to see it. Nobody will let you put cast iron on the glass top. Uh, if you surprised your wife, it won't even scratch the glass top. I'm not joking. Uh, that's a brand new stove, John. Got a double convection. It didn't do anything to the stove. I mean, but of course you got to be careful, but you can get, if you don't do cast iron, if you've got a grill pan, now uh, all clad and others, you want a real good heavy base. And if you can get a grill pan, this is the one with the ribs in it, and do it in there, I'm telling you, you you'll be doing good. You'll really be doing good. Just get something that really will give flavor. You want a, a pan that really has a lot of history and a lot of love on it. And if you get that, it's inherent in the metal. Like, for example, I'm going a little off tangent, but I want to tell you. I have to use the <laughs> – all right, that's fine. You can do that too. <laughs> okay. You got certain rules. You got to obey the boss in the house. I understand all of that. But you can uh, – you can bake it in the oven. You can do that too, but it means a lot of taking it in and out, in and out, because you really want to move it around and stir it and pour all that delicious, uh, uh, man, that butter broth is outrageous. Honestly, with the chives, those ingredients just came alive. The chives with the flat leaf Italian parsley just jumped out of the dish. It made such a flavor and, See, the, the original recipe, you can get a lot of recipes. I like to modify them because I put your twist on it, and there's no right and wrong here. Well, I put my twist on it. I left the juices in there. I love the juices off of a hot, steaming steak. Oh, I'm getting hungry talking about it now. It was so good, honestly. So I took it out. You, If you guys watch it, you'll see. I put it in a dish just to cool down while we introduced the next bunch of volunteers, which was the scallops, and then added more butter and added all the ingredients, including a uh, fresh squeezed lemon juice. It wasn't from a bottle. Everything, I try to do it. And you guys can. It's not a lot of money. And it's not like you have so much. You're not making it for 20 people. It may be just you and your honey, you and your three kids. Come on, splurge once in a while. Tell your wife to move over. She's on vacation. Give her a night off and surprise her. Valentine's Day, I'm telling you, would be over the top. Now, Tom, I use fresh pork lard on one steak because I love lactose. Oh, because you are a lactose intolerant person in the house. Lard was great. Okay, be careful. That's pretty heavy duty on your heart. But yes, some people do that. But uh, try to get a uh, organic substitute, something that's healthy because you really don't, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying that lard is dipping to the bottom of the, the food chain to eat. That's the worst type of food we can cook our stuff in. I, I understand some healthy fat, that butter is a healthy fat, but if you're lactose intolerant, I do understand it. Read the ingredients. Um, some of the butter, you're exactly right, might really affect you. So try to get a good, uh, try to get a really good uh, substitute if you can do that. And I think uh, you can still salvage a great, a great meal. But that's my uh, challenge to you guys. Try to do this meal. This is really simple, easy, to cook fast. In that meal, I had one pound of 
big sea scallops are the big are the really big scallops, like half a dollar bills and three quarters of an inch thick. The bay scallops are the ones, if you guys watched the video when I did it on the iconic restaurant in St. Pete, <clears throat> St. Pete's Shrimp Store, and it's also Shrimp House, it's the same name. They brought out little bay scallops. They're okay, but it's you lose something in the translation. Let me put it that way. A scallop is a scallop, yes, but I like to put my mouth on a chunk of scallop. So when I ate that steak and scallop, I cut it no less than a half, but a nice chunk of steak. And let me tell you, that was a meal fit for a king. So you really surprise your wife if you do that. And uh, there's a lot of good things that happen. So we're going to change the subject there because we don't want to uh, take that a step further. So I want to hear from you guys if you guys took the guts and had the guts to make a dish for her. If you don't make that, make another one. My dishes are easy. I try to keep them at 30 minutes or less from full preparation to finished product on the dish. Should be less than 30 minutes. And if you get everything ready and have the, that's providing you have the ingredients. Okay. So check out the other videos, guys. We have more there's a real tasty ones. And sorry, I know a lot of people like it and I chuckled about it, but uh, a little Oliver, a little uh, uh, a terrier, uh, I, it, it's a mix. He's smart as a whip. He jumps up like a Jack Russell. And that stinking thing was like, of all times, you have to pick now to go hyper. <laughs> I should have put her, put her uh, in another room, but I think it added to it, and I think a lot of people got a nice chuckle out of it because the dog, a pet is really part of the family today. We really like pets, and uh, he's, a, he's a cutie, very intelligent. He was dying for us to make a mistake and drop something on the floor because he just scarfed it up lickety-split. So he's like the, the, vac the vacuum cleaner from the Flintstones. In our house, in John's house, it's called Oliver. But check out all the videos We've got very good, uh, very good uh, uh, food items. I'm trying to pick a wide assortment of food items, and I think you guys are really going to like it. Uh, we'll do squid dishes. There are some more squid dishes coming up. I've got a oh, lot because I love squid. And, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's tasty. All right, Nolan. Nolan is the owner of, you see, NB Custom Tackle. He's from British Columbia. I said that I would talk about him. I'll take this opportunity to do that. I met him through the channel. And it's a really cool guy. A kid, he goes to, he's in high school. And for the last six months, he's been making custom lures called NB Custom Lures. And I looked at some of them, and he does a lot, makes a lot of streamers and flies. Oh, he's doing a bang up job. They really look great. And I'm, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I'm not getting them for free. Nolan, yes, MB Custom Tackle is on Instagram and YouTube. But I'm putting a plug in because they're quality, they look really quality made. We're going to test them. I fly fish, I do all kinds of fishing from the boat, from the shore, and wading, as you well know. And I'm going to put his to the uh, test. And he has lures, and I ordered some spoons. So as I get involved with him, I'm going to test them out and see if they were how good they work in these waters. There's so many different patterns, and uh, we'll see what it does. I mean, you never know. Like you go to Walmart, for example. He sells a complete fishing line, mirror lures, all kinds of stuff. Depending if you if you go in salt water in Florida. Uh, if you're up here in Tennessee, you're not going to see mirror lures. You're going to see other things like cast masters, jigs, little rooster tails. For fresh, fresh water is where the, the – that's everything. There is no salt water here. So they have a little cat by a company, Acme. It's called Cast Master. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it, and I should have had one here to show you. Sorry about that. But casting that out, I've caught everything from striper – to brown trout, to rainbows, whether I'm trolling, whether I'm casting and retrieving, whether I'm jigging, it's a universal lure and you get them in silver and in gold and then with painted colors on them. So you just never know. Don't ever underestimate the beauty of fishing. Let me say this. 
for some of you guys and uh, gals that might be uh, first time or looking in to get into the sport, this is the right channel because I'm not going to use uh, ten dollar words and dazzle you and talk about all my exploits, everything, me, 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 and leave you in the dust wishing you were. Now, it's, that's not the way we do it. I want to lend a helping hand through knowledge, through uh, whatever expertise that I've acquired over the years. I don't know it all, but what I do, I want to share, and you folks have the same thing. You guys are, you guys can share with me and share ideas that we can post on Instagram and Facebook. And everybody learns. You never stop learning. So the world of fishing is an ever, ever growing world. No one knows it all. They might portray that no one knows it all. And when they say, oh, you can't use this, you can't use that, there, that Lord never works. Try something. There's no, there's no law that says you can't. And what you least expect, you're going to get yourself a lunker. You're going to get a hit. You're going to get a surprise tug on the other end of the line. And I'm telling you, that adrenaline gets so thick in me. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about surf fishing. And I, I have some stuff I want to show you guys. Just one facet of the world, the big, big, big world of fishing. But we're going to get it. We're going to put a microscope. We're going to get it all the way down to where we are and show you what you can do. You're not going to gulp it all at one time. It's not going to happen. Like, I love to go in there and buy, buy everything I see, but I know that's not reality. So let me focus on, like, if, if I'm going to go freshwater for walleye, I am going to bring lures for walleye. If I happen to catch another fish in the process, fine and dandy. I always have an assortment of stuff. I don't just go with one more. And I'm going to focus because I've studied the habits of the walleye. I've learned. I've listened. We've talked about it, me and my buddies, how we're going to fish for them. So I'm coming prepared, whether it is making up my leaders the uh, with the hooks, with the lures, whatever it is, I want to be ahead of the game and I want to be prepared. If it's nighttime, what are we going to use? If it's daytime, if there's a, a chop on the water, what are we going to use? If we're going to have live bait, just have all your bases covered and you learn it. That's why I'm saying it's such a big world. You could be out there um, fishing for tuna one week. The next week, you're in the back pan fishing for bluegills. And both of them are exciting. If you have the right tackle, you don't want to go out there with a boat rod for a, for a pan fish. And you don't want to go out there with a little mighty might little rod for a tuna. You go accordingly. And if you... If, and in this channel, we'll help you match, if you have questions, how to match your tackle, your rod, your reel, your line, all the way down to the, the knot you're going to tie and what you're going to put at the end of the line, whether it's a law, whether it's a live bait or whatever. That's what our channel is all about. So we're going to do a lot of jib-jab. It's good stuff. We're going to kid around. We're going to have fun. So that's uh, what we're all about. So let me tell you, when I get the lures from uh, Nolan, he's the owner of and the sole proprietor of MB Custom Lures, I'm going to check them out and I'm going to give an honest review and, uh, and I'll be able to put them right here in front of you and show you what they are. And I'm sure they're going to work great because he's already tested them up there and they work great there. Fish or fish. So we'll see. What we uh, what it does, but I wanted to last week uh, we talked about uh, Daiwa BG reels, which are fabulous, fabulous reels. You can use them for all kinds of applications, salt water and fresh water. So no problem there with them. I'm very impressed with them. I know their limitations. Uh, one of them I had to put a pinion uh, bearing in already. But man, I wore it out. And unfortunately, it's not made to be underwater. And I know a lot of times either I dropped it or not paying attention. It dumped if I'm waiting and I have more than one rod with me. One got trailed behind me and got went, went surfing on the water. And that's how you ruin your reels. It is $100. Like having a $100 bill on it just dancing on the water. You don't want to do that with money. That's money. So I want to talk a little bit about let me show you guys a reel. 
there's a lot of reels you can go surf fishing with. So let me let me state that first before everybody gets up in arms. Oh my goodness, here he is telling me it's the only reel. No, 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 no. It's not. And I'm going to tell you why I went to this and when I use it. And I only use it for certain occasions. All right, it comes in a this is a really nice bag. It has the initials VS, which stands for Van Stall. All right, let me pull this out. Let me get the uh, handle on it. Let me get the handle on it. There we go. Come on. Yeah. There we go. She's just itching to go back in the water. All right. This is a Van Stall reel. This is a VS 250. They make 100, I believe, 150, 200, and 250. I'm not sure. I think I heard they had a 300, but I'm not sure about that. Anyway, I ordered mine in gold. And at the time, these, these are about mm, six to eight years ago I bought these. Uh, my buddy Steve and I, we were in New York, and we ordered these, and we had them shipped in. The reason they had to be shipped in is most of you guys that are fishing, which I can't believe. I don't know how fishing got this way, but as you can see, I reel. With, I hold a rod with my left hand, and I reel with my right. Totally opposite of probably 90% of the fishermen out there. I don't know why. I'm right-handed all the way. My left hand... It ain't no good for this. And so they didn't have these in stock and they had to get them directly. These are the ones who were made in the U.S. before uh, Zepco bought them out or, or before they were started manufacturing in China. So this are these are 100%, 100% watertight. This is phenomenal. These are phenomenal. I have on this one here, I believe... Third, this one, no, I put 40-pound braid on. So I use this only, only in nasty surf. And the only real nasty surf that I've ever fished has been Montau Point, Long Island. How you doing, honey? I'm going to weigh better. So this is the real. This is impenetrable. I've had this underwater more than it's been out of water. It's been in the sand, covered, engulfed in sand. So when you look online and you look at the advertising for that, they tell you all they do and you think that's malarkey. It's not. It's the truth. I tested this. And when you're in a surf like um, Montauk Point, let me tell you why it's so violent. First of all, it's a violent surf. There's a riptide there that'll knock you out. Uh, tremendous waves that'll cover you. And we're on the rocks. If you go on YouTube and do Montauk, let me let me let me spell that for some of you guys, just so you know where it is. Montauk is located at the end of Long Island, New York, where the Atlantic Ocean and the Long Island Sound meet. You've got violent currents there, big shark, big striper, big blue, big fish are caught there. Big fish. Did I say big? I mean big fish are caught there. And uh, they are not, uh, people have caught cobia. They've caught everything out that way. It's just amazing. But I, when we went to, um, one of the years we went to uh, Montauk Point, this is really a funny story. I love Daiwa. At the time, Daiwa had a reel called the Surf 6000. Big spinning reel with a huge, huge spool on it that could hold over 500 yards of 30 pound braid. Unbelievable. Yes, women allowed here. Good to have you on board. And uh, the um, reel, I took it out the first day because when I go prepared, and, and as we talk more in these chatting sessions, I want to talk a little bit about how you get prepared. What does a fisherman have in the tackle box? It all depends on what you're going to fish for, uh, what kind of rod, what kind of reel, selection, and time of day, all that good stuff. It's really not that difficult. You got to get your feet wet. And once you do that, it's like, hey, this is easy. It is easy. 
it is easy, but pay attention because if you go at the right time and you know how to read the water right, you read the signs, you're going you're gonna to be part of the 10% that catch 90% of the fish and not the reverse. So I, we went out there, we're in the surf, and uh, every time I make that trip for about, it was 12 to 14 days to Montauk, we stayed in some real seedy motel. It's right on the beach. These are rat traps. But we didn't care. We ate, uh, you know, water, soda, and pizza all week. This is two guys hanging out, okay? This is family here. Well, I bring three reels and three rods. These are two-piece rods because you can't take a 10, 11, or 12-footer on a plane. So I, my ideal one for me is 11-foot. For that surf, I want 11-foot rod. And especially if you guys check out the videos, there's a humongous lighthouse, probably 15 to 20 stories tall, all the way up on a hill. And the, the shot rock, this was blasted, are like some of them are like eight, nine, ten feet across, maybe six, seven feet front to back, maybe more, and probably a couple to three feet thick. Big, enormous slabs that they just built up at an angle. And we're like 40 to 50 feet above the water, but it's all the way at an angle. But it's violent water that some of the waves, even if we're at the very top, Come flying up over there. The crash is so much that we get doused. People walking on there 45, 50 feet above the water on the big wide open walkway. And then there's a fence in front of the lighthouse get doused. I mean, tremendous waves come in there. So we get geared up and I'll have to show you one day what we wear, what kind of rain suits, waders and so forth. But we went out there and this time we were on the beach right outside our motel. And we said, um, it looks good. Let's try it out. And a lot of things are speculation. Nobody's got a crystal ball. So here's what we did. We went out there and I had my 11 foot rod, my uh, surf 6,000 reel. I still love that reel. It's all aluminum. It's gorgeous. I can't fish it there. I mean, it's, it's uh, way, way above its capabilities. I uh, first, Day, first morning I was in the surf, it locked up. That surf, if you're ever in a, a real good surf, there's tons of sand that's in the water going and coming. It sucks it out, pulls it back in. And you get doused. And if your mouth is open, that's a mistake. And you'll get sand in everything. It's in every crevice of your of your reel, of your tackle. It will be in, in just littered with sand. So that reel locked up that morning. And uh, here's a funny talk. I, I went back up to the motel room because I was beyond furious. I paid like 400 bucks a reel. I brought three of them with me. And uh, I called the guy I bought it from. And he said, uh, "You try not to get it wet. I said, Rich, you really didn't tell me that, did you? Try not to get it wet. And I'm in a surf and probably one of the worst surfs in the world. So needless to say, I park, uh, I've got them parked, two of them over there down in Florida if it gets mild surf. And I'm not near going in anything over, over my knees. And nothing is violent like Montour Point. So if you're going to go into a really a heavy surf, be prepared to have a totally sealed. There's a lot of different companies that make the good reels. They're really, they are expensive. I got to say, uh, these were back in the day, 650, 700 bucks a reel, but Van Stahl. So I laughed. The reason I brought this out, I laughed at the guys that were uh, fishing these and we were saying, look at this. We didn't spend near that kind of money and we're catching fish. Yeah. That was the last year I went there with that. The next year, guess what? These have many scars because when you lay them down, they're in the rocks. They have to be able to take abuse. And if I get a product, a tool, I'm using it for what it was intended. I'm going to catch fish. I don't care what I got to do. If this can't take what I do for it, it's not a good enough reel. Simple as that. This is your drag adjustment here. It's really nice. It's been laid up for a while, but man, you have no idea these gears. This is a hoss. This is the Cadillac of surf reels. Uh, you can use it for anything else, but I save that strictly for surf where I know I don't have to worry about nothing.
I'm literally under the water reeling when waves are coming over and water's up to middle of my chest. And I got my rod low and I'm reeling, fighting a fish. I'm not going to be worried about it and neither should you be worried. Oh, is my tackle going to be able to take it? If it can't, you got the wrong tackle. I learned the hard way. I didn't get my money back on that. So that's just an example of one type. There are many companies out there that make great. Uh, I, I bought some pen slammers. They're totally water sealed. Uh, the market has changed quite a bit now. And there's uh, pen has greatly improved their offering. Uh, Daiwa has reels that are really sealed now. So it's become a major, major deal. And surf fishing is very popular. Now, I want to show you guys a little bit the type of lures that uh, we fished in, uh, in Montauk and some of the uh, bags that we uh, used. All right, I'm going to show you a little, then I'm going to go up, go up from there. Uh, Aquaskins is a manufacturer. They make a little pricey, but really nice stuff. All different size bags. Now this one holds, uh, this one has three big sleeves in it. Anything is jammed with lures. I've, the lures, and I'll show you what these are. I put these for freshwater striped bass for fishing here in Tennessee. I like just having this because I got to climb down on rocks I'm not hauling a, a tackle box. I might take a five-gallon pail if I have to, if I'm going to throw a cast net, but that's about it. I take something that I can pull some out real quick and pop on and off. Okay? So let me show you some of the stuff. The freshwater striped bass. The freshwater striped bass are just striped bass that have been introduced to freshwater. They are an anandromous fish, just like salmon. They can live in salt and fresh. They can do both and be perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, I knew this was going to happen. It's, it's inevitable. This happens. It happens to all of us. I'm going to see if I can take this apart without taking it. Uh, here we go. This particular lure is a jumping minnow. Uh, it sits a little bit in the water like that. And it, it can you can walk the dog with it, but you just you pull it back and it'll dart from either side. And if you chug, you know, pick your rod up, it'll be like chugging like that, going in the water, going in the water. And it's got a weight back here, and you can cast this a mile. This has seen many a striper and hybrid bass. The hybrids that we refer to here in Tennessee, and now listen, that's from New York all the way to California. They've been introduced. That is a biological mix. They mixed a white bass, which fights ferocious, and they're great eating good white meat. And I have a video on that, too, when we fished by uh, the J. Percy Priest Dam here one time when we had tremendous water. Jack came with me on that one. And a mix between that and a striper. So they put them together, and that became called a hybrid. Out of this world. Good eating, great fight, great, great fight. And this has been a killer war. Different colors in this. We have, a, a, I have other colors. I don't know if I have it with me here. But I have an assortment, so is what I told you. So here's another one that we use. Again, this is freshwater. All of these can work in salt water, too. I just use these here. This is made by Yozuri, one of the best lure companies ever. It's Japanese. This is a, a subsurface. It has a rattle in it. This you can cast. You can't imagine how far you can cast this. And you get, like, this is a herring design, but you can get all different ones. Now, it has that lipped nose. You see the angle? how it's cut at a 45 and you hook, you have your little eye hook up there. That's made to, when you cast it out, just jerk your rod real quick, snap the tip. After you take up your slap, snap the tip a little bit as you're retrieving it. All of a sudden, it'll dive down. And this, if I remember right, will go a foot 
maybe a little bit more below the surface, and it will swim like that. Beautiful walk to the, it has a natural retrieve pattern. Yozuri and these hooks are VMC hooks are ridiculously sharp. And yet, as sharp as they are, I've had beautiful heavy duty stripers bite it, swallow it, fight me, and spit it out. How that happened, I'll never know. Because once I get a hook with any one of these big lures, I have my line taught. I usually just jerk it a couple of times to really make sure I've got a, a good hook set. And I let the drag do the rest of it. But that's a Yazori, and it's a subsurface, like a darter. Here's a top water. This is the middle of the road. It's not the largest one. The Spook. Spook, I think, made it famous with Walk the Dog. It has weights in there. I'll hold these. You can hear. I, oof, these are so sharp, it's ridiculous. There you go. There is weights in here, and not only they rattle, but it, it helps you for acceleration. You need that push when you're casting them out. And this is a top water, and you don't you retrieve it and you twitch your rod. And I, I will I'll be back in Florida at the end of this week, and I'll be there through the end of the month. I'll show you how you walk the dog with this. I have a top water video coming out that you guys hold on to your seat, put your seat buckle on. You're going to see top order explosions of jacks like you cannot. Do. I mean, it is perfect. It's textbook style. Whether I use this, whether I use the jumping minnow, I used another mirror lure that was a top one, and they annihilated that. Explosions. And it just mimics. This has a silver body. This all different. There's all different color pal palettes on these. You don't, and you try it, you, you don't know what's going to work. So, you know, um, that's why we have so many. I'll show you another one. If I can get it out. Oh, buddy, is there a lot of them in here? I got a lot of years I don't even know if I'm going to be able to pull this, this junker out. Yeah, this is, happens a lot. I haven't used this in a while. There we go. I haven't used it in a while, and uh, they get a little bit happy. So I'll put this here. I've got two of these here. Here we go. This is a red fin. This particular one is a jointed one. You guys can see this. Hear that rattle? This is totally a top water, even though it has that lip. And if you pull it, it just it just goes like this, like a fish swimming. If you see my introduction on the YouTube videos, the way that brown trout is doing it, that's what this does on the surface. And this, oh, accentuates the tail. Unbelievable successful bait. And uh, Cotton Cordell makes this, and we call these, we refer to these as red fins. Beautiful, beautiful law uh, uh, lures. But that's fresh water. There's a ton more, and I'm not going to bore you with those. I want to show you. I'm going to move this out of the way. But this is a um, – I want to show you the bag here for a minute. If I can get the supply. <laughs> I knew this would happen. Wow. These guys have the sharpest hooks. Yep. And once they lock in, we're going to leave that one alone. Because I see trouble coming down the pipe. So we'll untangle these later. All right, the next size tackle bag, and these are ones that I've had from Montauk, what I regularly use. This is a really nice one. It's probably about 10 inches tall, four inches wide, and about maybe six inches across. I believe Canyon, uh, out, oh, out there makes it, but Canyon makes it too. Velcro. Now I'm going to show you some of the big boys. This is what a surfer, if he's going out fishing in the surf for a blue striper up in the northeast, this you're going to see feathers, you're going to see rubber, you're going to see red and whites and greens and blues and black. You can see all kinds of beautiful colors. I'm going to show you what this is. Now it has pockets on the side. You can put uh, 
uh, knives in there. On this side here, one of my most favorite uh, pliers, all total aluminum. I've had these for years. All I do, wash them out, drop a little bit of grease in there, a little bit of oil. These are fabulous, all aluminum pliers. And these ones, I don't have the split rings. Some of them I do. But you want something that's as rust resistant as possible. This bag, many a time, it has a, uh, as you can see, a strap on it. It goes crisscross across me, has a belt that goes around my waist, which that this is the belt loop in the back. This is to hold it tight to me and a, and a crisscross to hang on me. So if I'm bending over, I'm not going to have my bag flying out. It stays close to my body. But some of the lures, I want to show you. These are some of the big bad boys. These are roughly six inches long. This thing weighs like two and three-eighths ounces. This is a pop. And I'm going to tell you, the ones I have in here are the killer lures. These are the ones that are the most successful. Eric B., how you doing, brother? These are one of the most successful ones I've used in Montauk in heavy-duty surf conditions. Uh, you can use it from a boat tube, but in an ocean thing, this will get attention. This is a popper, and there's a way to – you can retrieve it fast. You can retrieve it slow. With quick, erratic movements, there's a rattle in it, and this will cause a splash, a big splash, big splash. If you go faster, the splash is bigger. If you go slow, and sometimes it's a pull, pull, pause. Pull, pull, pause. And you got to have an adequate rod. That's why, like, something like this that weighs two and three-eighths ounces – this is very heavy. You can cast this a football field. And this popper, I believe it's a, this is a Gibbs popper. The, Gibbs is the manufacturer. I would cast this out from on those rocks. We would all perch and we would be getting doused. We would cast, whip this thing out, even with an oncoming wind. That's how good this is. And it would take off because the weight, there was a lot of weight. And what I did here, we put, a lot of these didn't come with it. We put split rings onto the eyelet there. Because I need this thing to do whatever it wants to do in the water. And then I tie to that. I very rarely ever use, nothing against this now, but again, this is my experience. I very rarely ever use a leader when I'm doing surf fishing. I tie, I personally tie my, braid directly onto that with an improved clinch knot. I've never had one come out, ever, ever. I've had line break. I've never had my knot come out. But this is in lieu of tying a, a loop knot. I put these on there, and these are high strength, 75 to 100 plus pound split rings. You have no idea how these go completely down into the striper. Their mouths are so big, they can swallow a fish almost a third to almost a half their weight. Suck them in. This is outrageous. So this is one of them that we use. Very, very effective if they're top water. Another one that we use for top water and has been very effective. And again, I forget the manufacturer. This is like, an, this is almost, this has a, this has a rattle in it. You can hear that. This one, due to the design like a torpedo, many a time when we saw a blitz, a lot of action on top water where the blues and the striper from below are chomping on the bait. Birds are coming down and the, and the bait have nowhere to go. And it's like boiling water on there. You'll see patches of that. We commonly refer to that as blitzes. And that happens in, in down in Florida too. You'll see this. If I can't reach it with one of these, the top water, this floats, I can cast this like a bullet. Some variation of this, like needle lures too. I don't know if I have a needle lure here. Uh, I'll show you another one that we cast out. And I saved this for the really far applications. And, I, and believe me, as long as it's making the noise up on top, this will go like the jumping minnow. You just jerk it and bring it back. It's violent, and they're eating anything they see move in the water. They attack, and they ask questions later. 
I'll give you another type that I use. Let's see. Oh, yeah, these are great. These are Lordship Lores. We have an ongoing joke, me and my buddy Steve, about these. This is a, a weighted wood. This is a floating lure, but it's heavy. It's wood, and this steel in here, there's a weight in here, a huge single single hook, like a five odd, what, an, what, what is referred to as a bucktail. That looks great in the water. This thing, we tie right onto this, and how many times I would just, just wail it out there with my 11 foot rod, honestly, that I'm, it, it was so far out, I could barely see it. Hit the water and I just start jerking it back. You have no idea the violent attacks on these things. And I have them in all different colors. But that's another option. Uh, that's the other one is just like it, I believe. Now this one is all white. That one had red signifying a bleeding fish. Just to give you an idea, these are awesome ones to have. I love it. It's like I commonly refer to them as my children. Now, one of my most favorite style. I like subsurface. They call this a swimming plug. See, there you go. You see the way the front is curved? It's not, even though this is, but that's got a blunt end. This one is curved to go down. This doesn't go down. This stays on the surface and just, it's like pulling a brick across the of water, a flat object. This one, I can only tell you from memory, and it was so awesome. It's so exciting. You experiment. You can throw different colors out because some, sometimes colors really make a difference. We are, we're out there at nighttime. There's the light of the moon. I mean, it's not pitch black. We could see and We have good headlamps. This is all part of the gear. We're just touching on lures tonight. We would just wail this out there. We have no idea. We got to start just like I do in freshwater, just like I do in Florida. We tried bottom fishing. We tried mid. We got to know where in the water column. If the fish are active, where are they? So we start with the top. With this one, this one, Cast a Mile, has a really good, hear that? It's like a bunch of little marbles. This one's really nice. You can hear it in the water when we do this. So this is just like the Yozuri. We would whale this out there. All of these big ones are what we bought was two and three eighths ounce, roughly about five and a half to five and a quarter inches long. Perfect size for the striper, perfect size to mi mimic the herring, the uh, bunker, um, and all the other little uh, uh, hatches that are happening on Long Island. Well, in that part of the Northeast. We would cast this out in the dark. I remember this like it was yesterday. And, you know, we're about 20, 30 feet apart on different rock ledges. That, I mean, big rock platforms. So I don't want you to think we're at the end of a, a cliff. We're not like that. So we're out there and we are uh, casting it out and we're just working it. And this one, once you yank it, it's like the Yozori. It will go down about a foot to a foot and a half, depending on your retrieve now, how fast you do it. And you just got to reel it back and maybe jerk it a couple of times. And this will naturally go like that. And you have no idea. This strikes. Every now and then I, I feel a bump like bang up again. I said, oh, the boys are there. And we know it. And we feel it. And you, these are things that you learn as you do fishing, whether it's, I don't care if it's uh, you're fishing for bluegill, you're fishing for pike. You're fishing for walleye, you're fishing for striper, you're going for a marlin. You've got to, some of the game is enticing the fishing, maybe getting a reaction bite, as the bass fisherman will refer to that. Uh, you might annoy him and get in his face, but he just bangs you out of the way. And little do you know, bam, he's hooked and the fight is on. So this swimming plug is my most, whether it's this color or not, I have been so many different colors, I have another one here. There's another awesome one. Black. Red front. They all do the job. Listen to that rattle. 
These are phenomenal, huge VMC hooks. And a lot of these, I've put new trebles on them because they got beat to death. These guys are brutes. They're absolute brutes. They have no manners. They will tear up anything you put in, in the water there. So these things have got, and this is so rough. If you can only feel it, all indentations in here. And just to tell you, stripers have no teeth. Blues are different. Blues have teeth like razors and they're see-through. So be very careful. I'll show you another lore and a story behind this. This particular style, I've got probably 30 of these. They're all different colors. It's a wooden lore, slanted head. I don't think this has a rattle. Let me see. I might be wrong. Let me. Yeah, it does. Has a little rattle. Huge hooks. This sucker is called a daughter. You can fish it on the surface, but the purpose of this slanted head, we we did this one time. We fished uh, one of the inlets over there. We were experimenting because it's all new territory for us. So we came to a beach, and I said, I'm going to go out. I'm a, I didn't even go in the water. This was later in the evening. And I have a picture on Instagram, I believe it is. I'm in the back of, I brought my Ford van up there. I'm holding two humongous stripers. This is the girl that caught it. She's responsible for all of that. I was standing at the edge of the surf. I didn't want to go in the water at nighttime. I'm not going to do that. So I was, and I cast out. I didn't cast real far. But the way you work this is once you take up your uh, slack in the line, you jerk it, it will go under the surface and like like that, just like that. And that slant in it, it's called a daughter. It'll dart to this side, dart to that side, coming in, making like a, a like like a uh, a walk in the dog. But it's called a daughter for a reason. Outrageous. One night. I wasn't catching fish over there. I was at the rocks at Monto many years ago. And I never saw this color before. And I, and I wasn't getting a hit. And I'm saying, this is really unusual. They weren't biting anything. And I saw this uh, Asian kid. I don't know if it was Chinese or Asian, whatever. And he was fishing this. And I looked and I said, I'm going to get one of those. So since then, I'm stocked up on this color and instantly. See, sometimes they are keyed in on a color. That night, they were keyed in on this. And man, I have this in green, all different colors, and I change them out real quick. Now, a lot of times what I'll do if I don't tie direct to that split ring, which we add on, I'll put a heavy-duty snap swivel on, like a coast lock, 125-pound uh, strength, and I'll be able to snap them off real quick. I used to tie... Palomar knots, which is a really common knot Stephen would do. In fact, he taught me that knot. I introduced me to the Palomar knot, and it really was a good one because even in the dark, I can do that, flip it over the Lord, tighten it. And I've done a video on the Palomar knot as well. So you guys need to check it out. And they work with any type of lore, anything you can do that. I've, I've not had that lore ever, ever fail me. So I'm showing you different ones here that really, really work. I'll show you that. Oh, I told you I had it in, in, in two other colors. I do. I'll show you. Just to let you know, you have to make some investment no matter what type of fishing you're doing. Here's another one that's a very successful color. You hear that rattle? Just work beautiful. It just awesome. I, do we lose them? Yeah. Uh, just to let you know, these were eighteen to twenty dollars a pop. So uh, when you lose one, there's twenty dollars out in the wind, and I don't like doing that. Here's another one that was real nice, has a nice sparkle on it, purple bottom, little red there, and it just—it's a darter again that goes underneath and it goes side to side, just darts, walking the dog but erratically, like as if he—you know—he's got a fire now. I'll show you some of the other, other than a lure now, a hard lure, I'm going to show you uh, some of the uh, steel that we use. All right. 
This is a diamond, diamond, uh, diamond back lore. This one is a number, I think it's an A17. It says it right on here. It, it tells you what uh, weight they are. It stands for a certain weight. And it comes with a long hook, and a lot of them are made up already with all different types of tubes, different colors. I've got them with white. I've got them, let me see, yellow. This one got beat up a bunch. All different ones. These, I believe, the A17, probably two ounces. We would cast this out, and it's all sandy on the shoreline there, out. It's very sandy there. So you bring it, and then I just reel it back, sometimes really fast, sometimes just jerking it. This is in the water, and I can pull it right through the sand, and it gets picked up immediately. Immediately, it looks like an eel. An eel. Work a little flash, a tail, a little bit of white. They go ballistic. Another, uh, let me see if I have my jigs here. I wanted to show you guys. Uh -huh. I do have a jig. Here. Wow, this is, oh my gosh, it's a lot of stuff. Let me show you a jig. It's commonly referred to as throwing a bucktail. This one's a four ounce. They make them all the way down, like three quarter ounce. This one has a, a hook that, Lever it moves like that. Others are fixed hook. This is bucktail, actual deer bucktail. And there's a really well-made, well-made lure. I even something like this, we do snook fishing. They're called red tail hawk. So many different brands that have different colors, and we throw them by the bridges, let them sink, and then just start jerking them back. And you'd be surprised. A little flash of white like this. And I'll tell you what this is. <clears throat> and we only use this in uh, Montauk Point. And the uh, eastern seaboard, all the way down Connecticut, New Jersey, down there, Delaware, uh, Maryland. It is called pork rind. Now, this is just a brand, Striper. These are sea strip. These are pork rinds. And I don't open this up because it stinks to high heaven. It's just strips of pork skin and in some kind of concoction. Now, I'll leave this on and then I tear it off. A fresh one is a lot more vibrant in the water. But these are bucktails. And we keep an assortment of those. Now, I showed you this case, the probably my favorite case. Really, can, and then you've got a fun section here. Do I have anything in there? No, you can put other goodies in there. This thing will end up weighing 10 pounds. And that's why you have it strapped around your waist and you uh, uh, around your neck. So it's not pulling your neck. You have it strapped there, so you have some additional support. And the last one, and this one, I'll tell you a story about this. This bag, it's all Velcro, is made by Shimano. Total waterproof. It's got a hook there. Top opens up very nice. I keep all my, uh, let me see if I can show you this. In here are, if you can see all the stab, all little slots. I keep all my diamond, my, my metal there. And in here, Good, there's not a lot in here, which is great. They have a setup like this where you can fit one or two of those big lures in there and they hang over with the, with the hook. I have a lot of the diamond uh, lures here. But these things are beautiful bags. They work. Now, mind you, this thing is heavy. When it's loaded down, I have this around me and the belt loop on. I was fishing on the rocks at Montreux Point one night, and you wouldn't believe this. I'm going to tell you the power of the waves. I have a full rain suit on and everything of waders. Uh, it's still dangerous there on those big rocks because the power of the wave, when it comes in and crashes, it really, if you're not ready, you'll get knocked off. I had a friend of ours, a group from England that would come every year. We would meet them, and they would stay there a little longer than we were. 
And one guy, he was a smaller frame. He, and a lot of the guys wear wetsuits. I bought a wetsuit too. Just, it's easier to maneuver with that. And a guy got knocked off a rock and went in between the rocks and we were able to pull him out. He lost his balance. He was a small guy, small guy, maybe 150 pounds. Now, I had that off of me for whatever reason. Probably got in the way when I was casting. And I wedged it in the rock behind me. It couldn't fall in. It was heavy. It was loaded down with lures. One of the big waves had crashed, and I would put my head down. I'm, I'm covered. I, I'm, I mean, my arms, even underneath the thing, would get wet up to the elbows, but I was all dry where it counted. And my legs, my feet were dry as a bone. Anyway, these big waves would come in. Holy mackerel. Not only did I have to brace myself, because a lot of times I'm telling you, it's, they would just jolt you. They're so strong, the power of the waves. The suction going back, I'm lucky I saw this. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw that bag get sucked out of the, the crevice of the rock. It was going, bam, I had to run on that rock. I had to dive and sit on top of that thing and catch it, or I would have lost probably $600 worth of equipment. Suck right out to the sea. You'll never see it again. So this is just a little bit of the world of surf fishing and what it takes. It's such a big world. We're just a DM Goss. How's it going, man? Better late than never. That's right. But we're talking about saltwater fishing, some of my favorite lures for surf. And there's so many out there. Listen to me. What I bought are the ones that work year in, year out, the old-time favorites. Uh, you just can't improve on them. But there's other manufacturers that make stuff. You can catch them on all things. We've, I have had such good experience. Now, this is the five-and-a-half-inch model. They make little four-inch ones that are about that long. Those are excellent, too. And a little lighter gear, perfect. I, in, for my entire years of fishing Montauk every year, 30 pound Power Pro. Very rare that I ever have a line break. I upgraded eventually to 40 pound because it was really minuscule difference in diameter. So I spooled them in 40 pound. And those van stalls have never, I never had real problems again. Wonder why. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is just a little bit of the world of saltwater fishing of in the surf. There's so many. Remember I said this is just one facet. I hope you guys learned something. And if you have any questions on these lures, I love these. I love these bottles. Oh, I hate losing them. But there's so much fun. And then if you, if you got tired of that, you go to metal and these diamond, these diamond jigs. Oh, these are awesome, man. You just cast them out. I love it. These were good on the horizontal with this thing flashing. It looks like an eel in the water, and they nail it, or a sardine or something like that, a little narrow body. They really, really work good. There's so many applications, and I'm sure a lot of you guys that are experienced fishermen that are out there have done a lot of surf fishing. No way, no shape, and no form am I telling you how to do surf fishing. Everybody's got their style. Go for it. Be safe. There's some basic fundamentals that we have to pay attention uh, ne not next week. When I come back to Tennessee, I will show you my boots. There's a company called Corker. I buy the boots in a J J and S uh, J and H rather outlet in Oakdale, Long Island. Great, you guys can look at him online. I bought a lot of stuff from him. He had some good pricing, and he had the the, the oddball stuff. He had it there, so I bought the, the boots, and then. Corkers have on the bottom of them, you have to have little carbide spikes because when you're walking on the rocks, and they, even though they're big slabs and they're flat, they're not on an angle, this algae is slick as pig snot. You, I don't care what kind of boot you got, you'll slip. If you have corkers and you have these spikes, they screw in and they're replaced with some break, you can buy that. It's beautiful because you might, it's almost like your fingernails on, on the, the blackboard. But you go on the rocks and you hold position. It's remarkable. And it's not like walking on um, like roller skates or, or, or rollerblades. Nothing like that. It's very stable. 
and they're really good spikes. That's uh, what we had what we had to do when you fish that type of environment. Regular surf fishing, no, you don't need that unless you're in really rocky stuff. Then you better put spikes on. You better carry, and they're removable too from the cork because they have different. Bottoms, Corkers is the brand, but there are different bottoms for those boots. They work good. There's so many manufacturers out there. These are just the ones that we use. I still have the Corkers. They've been fabulously successful, even from the way they lace up. It's a un very unique system with cable. And you pull it and pull down. You don't have to tie knots. I hate that. i rather have a pull up. These are fabulous because when you're on the surf there and you're not thinking of, you're not going to make a good knot. None of that nonsense. That'll slow you down. Or a knot comes loose and you trip. These have a cable system that when you pull it, they uh, they tighten up the boot evenly. Very, very well thought out. So that's just some of our surf uh, fishing that's just touching the world of surf fishing. There's so many guys out there on YouTube that do a lot of surf fishing. Um, uh, Fishaholic. Uh, Rich, he does a lot of surf fishing. There's a lot of guys out there that put them out there. And you can see the rods. Now, they're using lighter rods, but it's a different application. Totally different types of fishing. You can fish any lure. You can take the Azores, like I showed you, and get them out there. They'll work, too. If the fish are there and the presentation is correct, you can do it. And let me get off that subject a minute. I want to say something to DM. Uh, I hope Japan is going good. Or have you made it back to the U.S.? Uh, my buddy DM, he lives in Robert Creek, Alaska, which is on the Juno side, if I got that right. And he had an eight-month job to take in uh, Japan. So I'm hoping that went good for you. And I'm uh, maybe you're back. I know it was hard on your family. But you guys are excellent. Excellent. It was a great crowd tonight i'm headed home way to go man are you are you uh headed home for good or are you just a little furlough but it's been awesome talking to all my friends uh nb thank you for uh tuning in from british columbia and my honey for good uh something told me that that's hard to do man when you got a uh, you have a seven-year-old man your heart your heart is tore up it gets like silly putty yicky it's, it's hard to do that to a family, to be away so long, especially when you have to raise, her, raise the children. But, guys, thanks so much. Everything was great. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Would love to have you part of the Fisher family. I welcome questions. This is an open forum. You guys have been awesome. Uh, I'll be posting uh, more videos this week. And be looking for that. Check out the food videos. They're excellent. And uh, in one of the upcoming chatting sessions, I just spent two days up in Memphis, Tennessee, with friends of our very dear friends of our family. And we were we sighted in a bunch of my rifles. I put new scopes on. So we're uh, getting the hunting part ready. And uh, hopefully we're going to do some coyote hunting. Oh, yeah, they're all over Tennessee, coyotes. And we're going to go coyote hunting. Uh, rabbit hunting and deer. We saw so many deer. It was just ridiculous. Man, I wanted to stop and get one, but it's not season. But you can get your fill of deer here in Tennessee. There's enough to go around. But we had a great time testing out the ammunition, shooting it, sighting them in at 100 or 200 yards. Uh, we were shooting everything from a 22 all the way up to 8 millimeter Remington Magnum. Mostly, mostly all Nosler uh, loads, and they were fabulous. Well, guys, I love you, and I will see you on the next chatting session. Take care.